here we are again, a brand spanking new Alfa Romeo. Just like the 4C, this isn't a Fiat with some expensive body panels on it. The thing is, the 4C is Alfa Romeo's Anakin Skywalker, there to bring balance to the force, designed to make people think Alfa is brilliant despite decades of no demonstrable proof. The 4C was there to make people fall in love all over again with Italy's Alfa Romeo. But it didn't. It was awful. It was one of the most hateful things I've ever driven. It was noisy, it was cramped, it was uncomfortable, it was unpleasant, it was tricky to drive in an oh this might end badly kind of way rather than an oh this is quite entertaining kind of way. It showed that Alpha cared more about style than substance. But now there's this new Alpha, the Giulia, and everyone's told me I must have a go because the top flight one, the Quadrifoglio, well, that has performance that can worry a BMW M3. You'll excuse me while I take a huge dose of salt with that one, but let's have a look at the specs. It's packing a 2.9 litre V6 with two turbochargers. That means 503 brake horsepower and 443 pound foot, enough to get it from 0 to 62 in 3.9 seconds and up to a frankly ludicrous 191 miles an hour. They even say it'll manage over 30 miles per gallon. Not today it won't, because, well, I have an empty racetrack all to myself and well, I plan on using it. It's already better than the 4C's effort because that sounded like you're trapped inside a hairdryer. This, well... Much better. Lovely, in fact. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm struggling to be convinced about Alfa Romeo, so allow me to explain. In my lifetime, only a few of Alfa Romeo's cars have appealed. The 147 GTA, a silly hot hatch, the 8C, a pretty supercar, and the Brera, a stunning but very flawed hatch coupe thing. They weren't the pinnacle of driving excellence. And what about recently? What's Alfa done? Well, the terrible 4C and a bunch of lightly upgraded Fiats. Hardly the stuff of legend. There were some truly great cars, cars people still talk fondly about today, cars that inspired people to become race drivers, that won races and championships and were all kinds of brilliant. But between them and, well, me, they became nothing but memories, really, and memories that were often associated with breaking down. And now Alpha says its newest, shiniest sports saloon is faster, better, more alpha -er than anything you can get today. Somewhere in there, people want to think that there's a dose of that old Alpha charm waiting to ensnare and enrapture them. Something that'll take them back to the past glories and wipe away the memories of wobbly, poshed-up Fiat's. <laughs> this thing is hilarious. It becomes unhinged, especially on a wet track. The throttle response, they have that awesome V6. Now, when you start off, it takes a little bit of time to spool up and then bang, you are gone into the distance. The steering is phenomenal. You get such beautiful feedback from it. You know exactly what is happening at the front of the car. And because this is front engine and rear wheel drive, it's got the proper layout the gearbox, it's quick to respond, and it works, especially in manual mode. In automatic, I find it a little bit, you just need it to make up its mind a touch, but elsewhere, it's all right. It's got carbon brakes all round, and oh my, do they work. They work so very well. The infotainment system is naff. There's confusing controls that make little to no sense. It's still very much an Italian car. But that's about it. OK, there are a few material issues. And I know it's economies of scale and things like that because there are lots of other Julias to go round, but there's some nasty, nasty plastics in here. And considering that this is not the cheapest car in the world, you don't really want scratchy plastics around your gear lever. But the chassis offers you so much feedback. You can toy with it. You can play with it. You do have to be quite committed because there are 500 horsepower on offer. But man, I adore it. I actually get why people said, oh, why haven't you driven this yet? You'd love it. I get it now, because I do love it. It's just, it's an unhinged, angry Italian monster. 
It's communicative. It gives the driver feedback. It makes you feel involved in the process. No, this one isn't a manual. But that doesn't matter because you can play with the gearbox and you can toy with it and you can enjoy it and you can make it your own. But it's not so scary it'll eat you. It's phenomenal. Whether or not the shiny-headed idiot likes this thing, it's a huge deal for Alpha. It's a new saloon after years of not having one. The big question here is, has Alpha made a good car? Do I now believe and get the whole Alpha thing? Yeah, race mode is phenomenal. The noise is awesome. Alpha's made a good car. Yes. <laughs>